Hello and welcome to our webinar session about accelerating accounts payable using automation and intelligence to drive business efficiency. A little bit of housekeeping first. From an agenda point of view, we'll be looking at AP Automation and Market Insights, why organisations need to automate, give you an update on the state of AP in Australia, have a look at some sample workflows and some cost savings. Our guests will be performing a demo on AP Valet and we'll look at some invoice processing flows and how organisations can leverage these. A little bit about myself, I am Damien Avalotis, Digital Automation Advisor here at Rico, and I'm passionate about helping organisations improve their work life. To the right of me is Matthew Denny, Managing Director of ARMIT Group. Hello, I'm Matthew Denny, and I'm the Managing Director of ARMIT Group. Our organisation specialises in digital transformation solutions, and one of our offerings is AP Valet, which automates accounts payable processes. And today we're going to talk about how AP Valet can transform your accounts payable processing to meet benchmark statistics. Matt, it's amazing to see that only 15% of organisations in Australia have taken up AP automation. And on the flip side of that, you know, by 2023, 90% of enterprise firms will have taken up some type of workflow to automate their processes. So there's a big disparity in what's happening here in Australia. For me, the interesting thing about those two statistics is that accounts payable is normally the starting point for that organisations use as their digital transformation journey. They start there because it's a known process, it's fairly structured, and it's also a process that you can get some quick wins on. And you can demonstrate a business case quite clearly with an AP automation implementation. And so Lots of organisations traditionally have used that as their starting point. And so what that statistic tells me is that only 15% of organisations or thereabouts have started a digital transformation journey. So there's a lot of organisations out there that are still yet to undertake this journey. And I suppose that's why we're here today, is to sort of talk to organisations and get the message out that it's really time to start doing this. And that 15% probably represents the leading organisations. And so we've really only started. And today it's more about, you know, not the leading organisations, but it's about the broader market and the broader market adopting digital transformation. Why do organisations automate, Matt? You know, we can talk about, you know, capturing invoices and, you know, reducing time and saving costs. But from an invoice point of view, what are the key points that we should take out here? I could actually give you a whole bunch of statistics and reasons and you know you've listed them there reducing time and cost etc but from a pure accounting perspective and the things that CFOs are, are driven by is revenue and cost and so AP is um, it's all about cost and where it actually does help on the revenue side is if you're not paying your suppliers you can't get your goods and services so you can service your customers you know, most organisations think about what's the implication for cost, but there is actually a, a downstream impact on the revenue side and customer service. So it's really important that, that AP is about not just eliminating costs and breakages and process uh, implications, it's more about actually building that streamlined process so that you can enact or, I suppose, influence both the revenue and cost sides of the business. So looking at AP industry performance metrics indexes, organisations that have automated AP best in class automation, getting around $2.80 per invoice. But when we look at AP automation, there's different flavours of AP automation. Some can vary from simply just capturing the invoice and the data. Some go beyond that and do validation and verification and coding. But the organisations that have tried to AP, they're not using best of breed solutions, the cost of those invoices can be as high as, as you see here, $12.60 per invoice. And you can see the, the differences between a best in class solution versus something else. Are you seeing this as well in the marketplace? Yeah, look, I think stark differences between best in class and, and all others there. I've seen scenarios where actually the all others is significantly more than, than $12.60. Um, there are organisations that you know, still exist today that 
would sit around the $40 mark for an AP processing solution. They are once-offs, and and those organisations are addressing AP automation, and they're the larger organisations. But those numbers sort of resonate where the market sits. I think it's important we recognise that moving from all others to best-in-class is a journey. And it's not just the tool set that you use, it's also a mindset that the organisation needs to take that they're looking to move from all others to best-in-class in this particular area. So these best-in-class solutions really help organisations manage those exceptions better. So you can see some of the top challenges here on screen. 62% high percentage of exceptions. The next point here is around invoice payments and approvals taking far too long. Is this in line with what you're seeing as well? Yeah, absolutely. And look, I think, interestingly, the one for me that says lack of respect or status within the organisation, to an extent, the accounts payable team is the forgotten team because they're back office. Back office, yes. And, um, you know, in a lot of organisations, it's about sales and it's about improving that area and, and generating revenue. And it certainly is that, but... I think I'll come back to that point I made earlier, which is AP automation is a starting point for digital transformation. And certainly sales automation is incredibly important, but a lot of organizations use the same technologies that we use in AP automation to drive those revenue generating activities and improve customer experience. So whilst we're here today to talk about AP, there is a much broader opportunity to to improve the organization through digital transformation. Let's have a look at some of the top priorities. So 48% want to improve AP reporting and data analytics. Is that something you're seeing as well? Absolutely. I think it's interesting. Those top priorities really, for me, if I was to classify them or, or, or summarise what we're saying there, it's all around visibility and control. Yeah. As, you know, where are my invoices? Who's, who's creating exceptions? Where are those exceptions occurring? How can I actually manage that? or control that process flow and improve my, my outcomes. And, and obviously the byproduct of that is driving cost out of the business. The next point here is you know, by implementing a transformation solution, you eliminate paper, reduce those manual tasks, improve the time to get that process happening throughout the organisation and see the benefits of that. Yeah. The other one that's interesting is that stat around 61% for full AP automation. So, and if we just look back at that 15% stat of organizations that started on the AP automation, a lot of the early adopters started in the AP automation realm as doing AP capture, Mm. not necessarily doing AP automation. There is a stark difference between the two. AP capture is about taking a paper invoice, whether it's a PDF or a, or a, a scan document that comes in the mail and actually just extracting the data off it. AP automation is much more than that. It's about controlling the process flow from its inception into the organization to the time the payment goes out the door. And it's about managing that as a whole and driving the exceptions out of that process as a whole, as opposed to just saving a few people doing data entry. And so from your experience, are you seeing a lot of organisations take up AP automation? It, I know p- people seem to think it's challenging and it's complex, and it is complex at times. But how do we make it simple? That's, that's a really good question. I think, I think it comes back to where technology and how technology has evolved over the last five to ten years. Previously, it was difficult to do a full AP automation suite. And, and there's been a lot of industry enhancements that have allowed it to become possible today. The adoption of web and, and integration standards now mean that AP automation is, is now something that can actually occur. And it's not just a, obviously AP automation. Now we can talk about sales order automation as well. So integrating with ERPs um, and, and having advanced automation tools that sit in, in concert with those ERPs is now something that the industry has evolved to. So that's why AP automation is now about a full stack solution as opposed to just capture. And so that's how AP is going to evolve over the next two years. As these solutions mature, the, the leading solutions that are doing full AP automation, they're going to address those, those components in the industry. 
Look, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time about a, a customer that we've worked on previously and show you an example of how we can help organizations transform their AP automation process. So on the left-hand side, we've got a pre-existing workflow where a lot of the staff were doing the manual exceptions and the coding and the rekeying of the data back into the ERP system. So you can see a lot of yellow and red circles versus the better outcome on the right-hand side is after implementing a full AP automation solution, you can see that the software is now driving the outcomes here. It's getting technology to do what people used to do, but it's also, it's not just that. It's actually also removing the bottlenecks. It's about improving the productivity of people. And I think one of the other things that I've observed in, in AP automation journeys that organizations undertake, it's not about actually removing AP staff from the process flow. It's actually about changing the way the existing AP team think. So rather than be someone that's uh, doing what I call a transaction processing law, where you've got to do that next invoice, you've got to process that ne next exception, it's, it changes from that to how do I improve the organization? How do I eliminate the exceptions? How do I work with my stakeholders, so vendors, staff inside the organization to actually automate the, the process flow. That's right. You can't do that while if you're not using a tool Absolutely. To, to manage those processes. Yeah, and, and it comes back to that same theme that I was saying earlier, visibility and control. That's what the latest AP automation tools deliver. They give the tool or provide the ability to actually spot those exceptions and then drive them out of the process. So it, it works on both sides of the equation too. It's, yeah. So, so from your experience, looking at the cost savings, you can see $12.36 per invoice in the old process, moving to $1.52 in the new. Uh, is this is what you're seeing when we deploy and deliver these type of AP automation? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's an uh, amazing ROI. <laughs> yeah, look, and it, it's, it's a strong ROI. And um, the size of that ROI differs depending on the size of the organization, obviously. The, the broader question is, you know, it's the starting point. It's a strong ROI, but it also, I suppose, helps the organization to start that journey on eliminating those costs. So this is the, the tip of the iceberg for digital transformation. Look, that example we just went through is a typical example of, of what a firm can go through in transforming its operations. So previously, if we had a look at the existing cost, we've got $12.36 per invoice times 30,000 invoices per year. That equates to a cost outlay of $370,000 or so. After implementing the AP automation solution, you can see now that we've really brought that cost down and able to save the organization an amazing $325,200 per annum. That's a order of magnitude type of saving that a typical organization can, can derive through AP automation. Interestingly, the thing for CFOs is that's $325,000 worth of costs not going into the business. So that when that drops down to the bottom line, because these are overheads, it's actually quite a large and substantial improvement for a, a firm of that size. So before we get into the demonstration, what I'd like to do is just set the scene for, for our listeners out there to explain how our application automates a process flow for two typical process flows. So we've got PO invoices and non-PO invoices. So PO invoices, they're invoices that contain a purchase order and you're looking to match the actual invoice to the purchase order. And you may actually be doing a three-way match or a two-way match depending on, on the organizational requirements. And for non-PO invoices, it's invoices that have been received that need to go through a workflow approval process. And obviously, prior to that approval process, they need to be coded to the general ledger accounts. I've actually color-coded these workflows at a high level just to give an understanding of how the solution works and where automation takes place and why automation takes place. So the items that are in gray on this particular slide show automated processes where the tool set does the heavy lifting. The green tasks are tasks where a manual intervention 
is only required where the machine learning and automation that comes with the tool can't actually process the exception. And there's many reasons why those exceptions occur. And they're actually interventions that you want to see happen. For instance, a typical example on the validation is the duplicate invoices. You don't want to necessarily try and match a duplicate invoice um, or you don't want to necessarily send a duplicate invoice for approval. So we stop when we receive these exceptions. And the red task there, that's just the approval. And obviously that always occurs um, prior to the invoice being sent for export, which results in a payment of the invoice. So with the PA process, can you, can you set the solution up to do straight through processing as well? Absolutely. And it's designed to do that. Yeah. And it, it will automatically match the invoice. So, so the, the goal is to, to get to a really high throughput of straight through processing. And the tool's been designed to do that. It's been designed to do machine learning on the extraction. And it's also designed to have business rules that you can develop, much like a, a bot, where you can actually manage that exception for that particular invoice or, or vendor, um, which will allow straight through processing. So, yes, the, the tool set is. And if we, if we drop away those, those green boxes there where the exceptions occur, the invoice will proceed on a PO invoice all the way through to export and on a non-PO invoice will proceed all the way through to approval. And obviously those, those processes are electronic too. So you can access those the, the solution from a web compatible device. Um, so it's developed in the latest technology, uses HTML5. What that means is as long as you've got access to the browser, you can access the solution from a tablet or a phone or a PC, and the user experience will be the same. Let's take a look at the solution. Okay. So we're going to access the solution via our web browser. The entire application is browser-based, which means that users don't need to download any plugins or any software on their workstations in order to access the solution. We integrate with Active Directory, which means that the users are synchronized from the system to the Active Directory solution that you have set up in your organization. So just a little bit of a rundown. When we access the solution, we enter into the work queue. And the work queue basically gives you a list of all of the tasks that have been assigned to the user that you've logged in as. And in those tasks, you can see some information about the invoices that are that are being processed or being approved. I'm going to go into the first manual step that we talked about in the process flow earlier, which is the enrichment step. This is where we validate and verify all of the data that's actually been received off the invoice and allows us to validate some of the data associated with the invoice. So, so first things first, let's just talk about the screen here that we're seeing and a little bit about the user interface. So we can actually drag out our and resize our screens. We can also clip out this image viewer to a separate screen, which allows for data entry on one screen and obviously viewing the invoice on another. It works quite well. I'm just going to dock that back in so that everyone can see that. So looking at this screen, I'll just take you through some of the, the main things that the solution provides. First and foremost, let's have a look at what the OCR extraction engine, the intelligent capture engine, has extracted from this particular invoice. Here you can see the data that the OCR engine has extracted. And the key thing here to learn is that the single source or best area of where you can seek the truth about this invoice is in the ERP. And this tool set in the enrichment merges the data that's been extracted from the invoice with the data from the ERP and then we build context around that data and determine is the data valid. So as an example you can see we've got some amber level exceptions here on the BSB number and our system is telling us that the value here isn't equal to the value that's in the database. So this could be 
a fraudulent invoice and someone needs to review it. Alternatively, it, it may actually be um, just a, an OCR capture error. So we can proceed past this point if it's, if it's not an issue. But some of the more important items that need to be addressed are identified here in red. And so, for instance, we can't find the purchase order associated with this invoice. And the reason why we can't find that purchase order is because there is no purchase order on this invoice. And the other issue that we see with regards to this invoice is it's been recognized as a duplicate invoice. So we can actually go in and view what the system perceives as that duplicate invoice. It will show the data, it will show the invoice and the actual data associated with those invoices and it will show the user exactly the differences between those data sets. I'm just going to actually go in and, and make a small change to the, the invoice number so that I can process it in my system. And I will select a purchase order for this document so that I can process the invoice against a matched purchase order. So I'm going to perform a search for this particular supplier and select an open purchase order with regards to this system. You might note that also the amount that I'm matching here on this invoice or, or signing to this invoice is an amount for $265. And if we actually go back, you'll note that the invoice is for $369. So this invoice isn't going to match. And I've set this up so that we can show how the system will, will operate when we have multiple purchase orders assigned to the one invoice as an instance. All my lines don't specifically match against the invoice that's being processed. I've got some options here down the bottom of the page also. I can place this invoice on hold for a period of time and then it will be released. Uh, I can save this for later. I may not want to actually action this to the next next step which would be matching alternatively if i'm not happy and it is a legitimate duplicate invoice i can reject it at this point and send it back to the supplier and ask them nicely not to not to actually provide um, duplicate invoices i can also write some comments about the invoice and place them in the order trail as as a chat for additional information for users that will be accessing this invoice further down the process flow. So I'm just going to complete this and let it move to the next stage. So I'm just going to give you a, a taste test of now I'm going to follow that invoice through to the matching process and I'm also going to show you what would happen in the coding of a non-PO non invoice. So I'm just going to pick up an example of that invoice that's actually been matched and show you what's happened. So the auto matching module has actually sent this invoice through and it's sent it to matching against that purchase order that I presented earlier and it's matched the lines of the invoice. I love how it actually shows the invoice data versus the purchase order data side by side. Side by side. So on the left we've got the invoice and on the right, we've got the purchase order. And you might note that we've actually got an unmatched mount. And these boxing boots, they're always left unmatched in my demos. And what you might notice is we actually have a quantity match as well as a, a dollar match. And we can actually then pick up additional purchase orders. And, and there's one here that I've collected earlier, which has got the boxing boots and the amount is actually $40. So when I match this item, you'll see that the actual item will, will match within a tolerance. And I've set that tolerance. So I'm going to match this item. And you'll see that tolerance. Now I'm going to match this item against the boxing boots and set the information such that the item matches. And what you'll see is, with regards to my matching, I actually have matched within the tolerance. 
So it's not just direct matching, we can actually apply tolerances to line items as you process the invoice. And that's about managing those exceptions. And it's managing those exceptions within the standard process flow. And these are typical exceptions that accounts payable staff find on a daily basis. And normally this broken process would follow a, a quite a complex resolution path in order to perform a partial match on an invoice. And that's the beauty and the simplicity of, of this solution. It's about managing the exceptions within the process flow. And this is what separates true AP automation tools from capture tools. So completing that task will then obviously send it through to the next step in the business process. Now I could actually send that invoice through an approval process because it's partially matched. Or alternatively, if it's matched within the tolerance, I can send it through to, through to the ERP for payment. Let's just have a quick look at coding and an example of how the system can apply coding rules to invoices. So this would be typically a non-PO invoice that's actually been sent through for coding. And what we've done is we've actually set a coding rule where we've said wherever an invoice comes from JJ Richards, which is the, the vendor, we'll actually code it to a particular GL code. And so you'll actually see here what coding rule has been placed on the actual document, on the invoice, and you can see what the percentage allocations are for that particular coding rule. I've set the system to actually show um, to send all invoices to coding so that we can demonstrate how the auto coding function works. But in a production environment, this would go straight through to the approval step rather than the coding step that we're seeing here. You can do all the normal things here as well. You can, you can add lines, you can split lines, you can delete them and change your coding. And you can actually apply those coding rules not to just one line on the invoice, but you can also select all lines. Alternatively, you can select different lines to perform the coding. This integrates with the GL codes from the ERP, and we support up to 13 dimensions with regards to the GL coding. So it's important to understand that it's highly configurable, and we don't spend years getting the solution built for the organization it's configurable and that's that's really key to building a, a strong business case around ap automation so once the erp integration is is complete we're actually calling the erp's gl codes here to perform the coding of the actual invoices and so let's just go and and quickly touch on the approval step and we'll just have a look at a, a telstra invoice for instance that we've approved has been sent for approval previously so again you're starting to see some cons consistency in the way that the application works We've got our invoice here on the left and our information here on the right so you can see our approval step here and you'll note that there's consistency in all of the screens that you're seeing within the solution the approval step again we've got our tabs here for various information we won't go into the detail of that here We've got our invoice here on the left which you can obviously punch out to a separate screen on the right here you have the data associated with the invoice and you can actually perform partial payments or payments in full and you can actually also as part of this process have users state that the goods have been received if you do manual goods receiving and, and not through the ERP. So that's important. You can build a checkpoint here with regards to goods receipt as part of the approval process. Quite simple functionality in terms of the approval process. You can see that the place the invoice on hold, potentially I might not be ready to, to approve this invoice. I can approve it, I can reject it, because it may not be a valid invoice, or I could reassign this to another cost center manager who is responsible for the approval of this particular invoice. I'm going to approve it, send it on its merry way to the ERP solution. 
So that's the approval step, and we've been returned back to our work queue as a result of processing it. We can now work on the other exceptions that are in, in my work queue and resolve any of these items. I want to thank you for sticking with us and taking the time to view the application. I'm going to now hand over to Damien. Thanks, Matt, for taking us through some of the key features of AP Valet and for taking time out of your day to be part of this discussion. I also want to thank our listeners for staying to the end. I hope you were able to take some key points away from today's session on accelerating accounts payable. Please reach out if you have any further questions regarding AP Valet or any of Rico's content and workflow solutions.